Summer has arrived. This means increased electric car range, changing over to summer tyres, and of course removing my diesel air heater. In around 10 minutes I had the whole thing unplugged and removed from the car, I patched up the heater's exhaust hole, and I put the device away until the next winter, which arrived two weeks later. Well it's the 19th of April, winter is long behind us, but it's still snowing. You can see I have to use the electric heater because I took out my diesel heater because it was tropical last week. Fortunately summer soon returned, allowing me to take my electric bike out and about too, exploring the cycle paths near our house. There's heaps of interesting stuff to see while you're cycling along this. It's called the Iron Curtain Cycle Path for obvious reasons. It's got remnants like this, barbed wire sections of the original Iron Curtain, which is pretty cool. Another cool attraction near our house is this bridge which goes across this river, the Morava River. And, let me hang on, let me just, going up a hill here, let me just be a little bit lazy. There we go, oh, perfect. And this bridge goes across the border between Slovakia and Austria. As you can see, this black line here is the border between the two countries. And I don't have my passport with me, so I'm not going across. <laughs> Now I know it's been ages since the last disastrous Kiwi EV video where we took our little city electric car skiing to the mountains where almost everything went wrong and since then there's really been nothing to report on in that time. I'd like to say that I've been busy cruising around the country in the sunshine but in reality I've been doing what you and most people do with their cars, driving to work, driving home, crawling around in city traffic, and that really doesn't make for compelling viewing. But at least driving to work in my electric car is faster, more comfortable, and even cheaper than taking the bus, with my car costing around 18 cents per trip. And that brings me to a good point. People often ask me if I have a deposit down on a Tesla Model 3, or if I'm planning on upgrading my electric car to a long range model. Uh, and no, the answer is no at the moment, because uh, I'm a regular wage slave, and a Model 3 is a lot of money. And besides, I saved for two years for this little electric car, and I really want to get my money's worth, and it's a cool car. I'm happy with it. So I've been trying to figure out how long it will take me to pay off my electric car, which costs 7,000 euro, based purely on gas parts servicing from my previous gas-powered car, which as you can see is a little Econo box. But even on an Econo box like that, I still ended up spending around 1,900 euro every year on gas, oil, parts, pulleys, belts, filters, spark plugs that are a replacement radiator, and all the stuff that you have to pay for when you have an internal combustion engine. Based on that, I worked out my electric car should be paid off within four years, and I'm already halfway. Many will remember I did something similar with my electric car conversion, taking the money I used to waste on gas each week and putting it in a jar for our honeymoon, which was epic as you can see. And I still think about the original Kiwi EV often, in particular that familiar whining noise the controller made, something most electric cars don't have. But this gave me a pretty interesting idea. People often say that electric cars are too quiet and they have no soul, but I'm going to prove them wrong. Check this out. All jokes aside, in 2019 the EU is going to mandate all electric cars to have noise generators. So unfortunately that means cars like mine, which are older and don't have one, I'm going to have to take it into the dealership to get a noise generator installed. Unless I make one myself. I've come up with an ingenious method to generate noise on the car, using a harmonica. No electricity, eco-friendly. Now I just need to figure out the ideal speed at which this operates. Ah, okay. Maybe a little faster. Oh, come on! Yes! 135! It works! Yeah, that was a terrible idea. In the meantime, I had a visit from a fellow EV fan from across the border in Austria. Oliver brought his Renault Zoe over for some Slovak electricity while we talked electric cars. Willkommen! Oh, danke! <laughs> 
<laughs> now his battery is leased, which is scheduled for an upgrade to a 40 kilowatt hour pack, giving him a range of around 300 kilometers. It makes my 16 kilowatt hour pack look pretty tiny, and my pack makes long distance trips challenging, as you know. But this gave me an interesting idea. Now, long range electric car journeys are a little bit overdone by everybody, so I needed to find a way to keep you, the discerning viewer, entertained in the hope that you'll share this video. And I think I've come up with a great idea. A race from Bratislava city to a restaurant for dinner in Kosice city on the other side of the country. So on a Friday morning, we chose our methods of transport. I'll be making the 480 kilometer journey in my city little city electric car. And I will be taking the intercity train first class. Here is your ticket. Thank you. Here are your khakis. Thank you. May the best man or woman win. And the loser by dinner. Deal. Goodbye. Goodbye. From the starting point, here, I'll be stopping to recharge here, 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 and here. Meeting for dinner here in Kosice. I'll be cutting across the middle of the country, like this, while Veronica will be taking the train going up and around, with the last one to Kosice buying dinner. And as I could leave any time I like because I had a car, while Veronica had to sit around and wait for public transport, I jumped in the car and left the city behind, making full use of my three hour time advantage. And with that three hour head start, I was understandably confident. So basically with this route, and this time advantage, there is no way I can lose. And here is our first charger. Everything going according to plan. And we're off. Right, 80%, 22 minutes. This old car still charges pretty quick. Let's get out of here. Charging point number two was in the city of Nitra, and as the charges aren't too far apart, it didn't take me long to get there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, let's grab another quick charge and then fly down the highway. I charged up to 80% once again, giving me more than enough energy for the short distance to the next quick charger. This meant I could drive at the car's limited maximum speed of 135 k's an hour all the way. Next charging stop. That was fast. Maybe a little too fast, as I soon found out. I think I've worked those batteries a little bit hard because the air conditioning, which channels cold air over the battery pack when quick charging, I've never seen it run this long and this strong. Charging was taking longer than normal due to the battery pack being quite warm after 30 minutes of high speed driving, but I was still 150 kilometers and two hours ahead, while Veronica meanwhile couldn't go anywhere. That's the basic problem with public transport. You have to adjust your schedule to work with buses and trains. Whereas with a car, you go when you want, and that is why I'm gonna win. Okay, we're good to go. 90%, but it did take me almost 40 minutes to get there because unfortunately I've really really overheated my batteries but we're off the next stop was a charger I hadn't used before in Zvolen 210 kilometers from home I cannot find it and annoyingly I lost 10 minutes driving around numerous parking lots trying to find it here it is here it is here it is here it is oh thank god I needed a decent top up at this point as I had 72 kilometers of mountains ahead of me. In the meantime, the rain arrived and I got a phone call from Veronica who was at the train station by our house ready to take the journey into the city. Hello darling. Hello, where are you? I'm in Zvolen. Zvolen already, wow, cool. I'm in Gevinska. <laughs> Okay, well I'm uh, about to unplug and go direct to Rujomberok from here. So basically, wow. I hope that I hope that uh, you've got your credit card out because there's no way that I'll be buying dinner tonight. Ah uh, well, we shall see. <laughs> All right, race is on. Bye. Bye. No, he's no way he's going to win. No way. I'd better hurry. Veronica was now on her way to catch the express train from the city centre, and while I had a 200 km lead, she didn't have to stop to recharge, which made keeping my advantage a challenge. Veronica's intercity train actually goes a little bit faster than the average car now because they've reduced the number of stops. That means that I need my head start, I need to keep this lead that I have. 
Veronica's intercity express train was soon leaving Bratislava main station, racing through the countryside with a fairly confident Veronica settling in for the journey. That's just a really comfortable way to travel, I must say. It's pretty good. Feeling happy. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was determined to win, even if it meant working my battery pack hard over the mountains. Unfortunately, I can't take my time. I have to go up these hills at a reasonable pace. Well, I'm making good progress, but unfortunately I've been stuck behind this diesel bus for the last 25 minutes, so even with my vents closed, I'm still getting a lungful and starting to give me a bit of a headache. Alright, let's get those electrons ASAP. Hello. Hello. Where are you? I'm recharging in the Rouge now. Wow, that's cool. I'm just, just in Trenchin right now. You're already in Trenchin? Yes. Oh. Yes, why? Oh. Okay, that's a bit f faster than I thought it would be. Okay. I'll see you in Kosice. Bye. bye. Yes, bye. No, no, there's still a very good chance that I'm going to win this. Still a very good chance. Oh my god, what is this made of? While I enjoyed my plastic sandwich, Veronica's train was heading north to Zelina. I, meanwhile, had recharged to 95% and was flying down the highway to Poprad. While there, I charged as much as I could. 93% charge. That's all it would take, actually. Maybe the batteries are too hot today, but it wouldn't go past that. Next stop, Brasov. And I know that Veronica is just past Rujon Barok and speeding up fast. The 81 km journey to Prasho was my last long distance stretch and I had to find a balance between speed and economy. Once in Prasho, I'd only need a very short charge for the short stretch down to the restaurant. At this point, the race was mine to win, as long as nothing went wrong. God, I just arrived into the edges of Prasho, but roadworks and traffic on a Friday afternoon. Ay ay ay. And that train's gotta be barreling up behind me any second. I mean has she gone past me? Is she behind me? I've still got to stop and recharge, but only for about 15 minutes, just a 15 minute super quick charge, and then straight down to Koshitsa. Oh come on! I've been in this traffic for about 15 minutes now, and I've only moved a kilometer. It's been what 28 minutes later, different road, different line of traffic. After 40 minutes of waiting, I tried a shortcut to get around the traffic to get to the charger. I don't believe it. But the shortcut failed. That's the traffic I have to get into. I'm going the wrong way now. That's the traffic I've got to join. Oh my god. There's no other charger here. I have to get in that somehow if I can turn around. I've got about 5k's, 6k's now. No, four and a half k's back to the charger in that. What a disaster. While I was stressing out and complaining about that long line of cars I'd have to somehow join to get back to the charger, I missed the off-ramp which would loop me around and back into that traffic right there. From here I had to attempt to make it direct to Kosice. The Kosice charger, the closest one in Kosice, is 26 kilometers away. I've only got two bars of battery. I don't... I don't think I'm going to make this. One bar of battery left, 9 kilometers estimated remaining range. 19 kilometers until the charger. I think I'm going to have to find someone, find uh, if there are any off-ramps, find an off-ramp and see if I can borrow some electricity for a half an hour. And then I swallowed my pride. Oh my god, this is embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> God, this is embarrassing. God, I hope it's safe. Oh, it's charging. <laughs> Let's just forget this ever happened, all right? The Kiwi EV has hit a new low, but very graciously, this Slovnaft petrol station has given me some free electricity. I slow charged for 30 minutes and in that time learned some pretty annoying news. So ladies and gentlemen, where are we? We are in Kosice. I think I may have just won this. So unexpected gridlock and 30 minutes of slow charging had narrowly cost me the race. 
So after thanking the gas station staff, I drove the final 14 kilometers to Kosice. I give gas stations and the oil industry a hard time, but just occasionally, in moments like this, they redeem themselves. All right, and let us never speak of this again. If I'd known about the traffic in Presho, I wouldn't have driven there so quickly, and instead driven slowly and directly to Kosice. But it made the video more interesting, I guess. To a fair race that was let down by traffic, otherwise I would have won. Alright, alright. Cheers. Cheers. The taste of losing is bitter. Nice bitter though. <laughs> After dinner, we got a good night's sleep and went exploring Kosice the next day. On the way back home, we took the side roads, which are much more scenic and relaxing, zipping in and out of villages and towns, before returning home in the evening. And after all those price calculations, snow, city driving, musical cars and racing trains, the only question remaining is, what will I do next?